everybody. Feel free to say hello to each other if you want to unmute and just. Good morning. Nice to see everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Does everybody have a lot of snow like we do? No. 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 <laughs> oh wow. I yeah, have to get those those How much do you have, Ginger? Um well I would not say it's a foot, but we we're it's covered. I mean, and I mean the ice and snow, I mean it just it's on our windows. I mean, it's kind of beautiful. I've never seen it quite like this because um, it rained first and then the snow. So everything kind of stuck to the house. Um, it, it is a little icy, um, but it's very pretty. <laughs> it is, yeah. Seven inches. We only got a couple inches in Terramore. Yeah. How yeah. Many happy oh, well. That. <laughs> More is coming. More is coming. <laughs> it's winter. Here's well. our Sasha was uh, lost to power last night. Oh, did she? Oh, dear. Rudolph. Oh, I love your ear. You're a reindeer. <laughs> oh, oh, let's see. And um, let me see. Here's, I got my Christmas tree. Where is she? There she is. Okay, I got my Christmas tree. Excellent. We are in the Christmas spirit. Good. <laughs> Steve and Colleen, did you get any snow down there? <laughs> No snow, but it has gotten chilly. It's, it's a perfect temperature right now. Um, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Tom. It's not chilly. Yeah. I don't see her. And I'm wondering if Kate, if, if Meg's sister Kate I know had any snow. Probably not. And I don't see her. No, it's 75. It's going to be. 75. Okay. Just just for a reality check for the rest of us, you know. <laughs> so, like, so Hi, Sue um, and, and Gia. Nice to see you. Yeah, it's good to see, see you, you, my dear. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> oh, I miss you so much. <laughs> miss you. We miss. We need. We need to do some serious cooking when we get back into that kitchen. Sure do. Oh, I would love that. Yes, we can have fun. And I see Autumn and Nora out there. Okay. Nora's wearing her little, are those kitten ears? Went, are those, what kind of ears are those, do we think? <laughs> Bear yeah, ears, cat ears. You're muted, oh. Brands. <laughs> You're muted. I can't hear you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what kind of ears do you think those are, Nora? Are they pom -pom? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Bob, I love your background. Is that using the software you sent me? Is that how you put that up there? No, it's it's using the same thing that's on the Zoom. If you go down to uh, the, the left corner of your Zoom screen there and click on uh, start, the up arrow and start video. Yeah. And then you can just choose a virtual background and add it through Zoom. The reason I sent that other one to you, because I didn't know if you're using Zoom all the time. Uh, because a lot, uh, that's what that other one is for. If you're not, uh, using yeah. yeah, I just gotta, I gotta get busy and find some good backgrounds. Not that we have a lack of them around here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call us into a focus place um, this morning and say welcome to Jackson Community Church. I'm in the church. You can see the tree is lit. There is a veritable feast of nativity scenes that have been shared by several different families they are all set up in the sanctuary so if anybody has a quiet a day where you need some quiet the place is always empty but it's always unlocked you are more than welcome to come in and you'll you'll find all kinds of nativity scenes and I've got an assignment for everybody and anybody that knows the answer is not allowed to tell but when you look at the nativity scene, see if there's something that's missing from all of them or most of them. So you can report back during the week or next Sunday and let me know what you notice about them if you happen to come down here. We also have Advent trees that are outside and we have ornaments both outside and inside. So you are welcome to take a star or this week a dove and 
add your prayers to it. You can take it home and paint it and then bring it back or hang it on your tree or write something right here and put it on our trees. The trees are outside, so you never have to come into the building if you don't want to. Um, there's a lot of snow around the bottom of the trees now, though, so you might have to wear boots. And just a reminder that today is communion and also candle lighting of the Advent candle, and the Varan family will be helping us light the candles shortly. But if you didn't already get any supplies you might need, now is an excellent time to do that. You would need some type of an element for, you know, like a juice or a beverage of some kind for communion, as well as maybe something to nibble, cereal or bread or a cookie or anything fun. It could be a piece of fruit. It's fine. God will bless it as an element of communion. It is in the sharing and the blessing that we find the meaning. So it, feel free to prepare those things. And if you have your Advent ca uh, candles, you can get those ready. And often, you know, you'll see that I went ahead and I lit the first one because we lit that one last week. But you can also light both of them right when we light the second candle. And the verandas will help it, us think about that light. And we're going to just start this morning again with our centering. So Alan, if you want to give us just a little bit of centering music so we can grow quiet and ready for worship. Now, um, I just want to also acknowledge that, especially at this time of the year, we have a tremendous number of worship leaders who are helping us prepare the special parts of our service. And so uh, Billy and Alan have worked with the choir to prepare another one of the special Christmas pieces. Um, this piece is called Osei Shalom, and we'll hear that later in the service. We also have the Vrans, as I mentioned, who will be helping us light our Advent candles. And also we have some guest song leaders. Clara Long's sister Nancy and her nephew Tyler prepared the songs that we are going to sing as a congregation this morning. Um, so their voices are the ones that you'll hear when we are all singing together with the words up on the screen. So for these and for all the other ways that people have been so tremendously wonderful about enriching the life of the church, those that came and decorated the sanctuary over a couple of days, those that helped put up the trees last week, the people that are organizing, taking care of this building. We had people coming and working on our chimney just a few days ago, so we thank Bob for helping coordinate that. There are just so many different ways that people are tending to the well-being of this facility as well as our community, and we give thanks for all of you. And now I would invite us to prepare to light our candles. We're going to place a call and response up on the screen for everyone, and the Varans will be our leaders. They will read for us, and then we'll read back to them. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. Go ahead, Nora. So the, you have been chosen by Holy Love. Make ready for God's presence. Change your life forever. Call you to be agents of peace. Yes, you may have cautions and concerns about what is revealed. Find by simply listening to the great question, love after you. Each of us, each of us, becomes a voice to the story. Hold as if for the first time when we add the end of the season. Okay. 
And now we're going to take the words down, and you can see how the candles are being lit. Oh, I'm sorry. One, and there's the other purple one. So for anybody that wondered, it's two purples. You can do it in any order that you want. And there you go. I'm going to do our church's purple candle now. Thank you, Varand. And now we would love to move from candle lighting to prayers. Am I right? I think I'm right for this right now. We're going to do prayers of the people. And then we'll move from there to a song. So if we have prayers, um, it looks like Bob has a prayer that you want to share. Please do. Uh, yeah, uh, Terry O'Brien, uh, that owns the parka, uh, uh, recently came down with COVID. And uh, the entire, st they're, they're all closed down now. And our entire staff, including my daughter, is quarantining. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter tested negative, so, uh, but I think we should uh, have prayers for Terry. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think at this point, if you don't know somebody that's, that's um, struggling with COVID, um, you probably will very soon. So COVID is really close to our homes and our hearts right now. And so for all those that are either positive with COVID or working on the front lines around COVID or whose businesses and livelihoods and uh, stability have been affected, we, we ask prayers. I see Sue is ready with a prayer. Yes, Sasha's family has had a very tough time with COVID mm -hmm. and now her daughter has come down with it. The entire family is affected and this is not easy. And of course, this is very hard on Sasha who is in herself um, needs some of our extra prayers. She has major health issues that need to be addressed. So please keep Sasha and her family in your prayers. Thank you, Sue. So again, those um, living with COVID um, and the ways that it also separates us from each other while we, you know, work back towards resiliency person by person and then make sure that others are safe by quarantining. And we have a list of, of prayer requests for health. We have a lot of people struggling. COVID is one piece. We have a lot of people with requests. I'm going to pass along Jan Brogel's request for extra prayers for Barry. He's had another complication. Um, this is Barry Brodel, um, who has a spinal injury and is paralyzed oh. from, you know, uh, and, uh, but so anything that, that upsets his systems really upsets his systems and so he needs extra prayers right now as does Jan. Uh, we have some other folks that have had really challenging weeks in the last few weeks so we have a general request for I'm going to kind of like name parts of the body you guys can throw out any others that I missed but for our nerves and our brains for our muscles and our tendons, for our bones and our spines, for our hearts, our lungs, our kidneys, our lymphatic systems, our marrows, spleens, limbs, just our joints. For so many parts of the body that in different people need extra help in order to function well and to keep the people that need them okay. For gratitude for those that become our sense of safety nets when health is in question. And for those who love us and take care of us, our family and our friends who keep us knitted together even when we have to live apart from each other. 
you know, groceries and rides and communication and phone calls and knocks on the door and surprise goodies outside the door, whatever helps to connect people. We ask, um, we, we express gratitude even as we talk about the concerns that we have. Are there other prayers of concern this morning? Kevin, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and pray if you want to, okay? Thank you. Okay. Prayer for you and Chris and for Pastor Nathan and Jennifer and for my friend Kim who has a low-grade fever and thinks she has a UTI and for Caitlin who has seizures and for um, the doctors and nurses, first responders in the military. Thank you. Uh, and definitely prayers. For, go, um, Alan, go for it. Um, I, I would like to pray for all of the uh, frontline workers. Um, I myself being one of them, I, as you know, I work at a bank and we've had three people out um, due to COVID. So um, we have several days where there's literally only two people in the branch. Um, so it puts a lot of stress on frontline workers. So I'd like to pray for them. Thank you, Alan. For those that are still standing on the front lines and haven't been knocked down, and for those that are, you know, have had to take a break because of COVID and the stress it's putting on everyone, uh, we think about those that are experiencing burnout and are being pushed really to the edges of their, their endurance by these times. We think about our children all over the world, some of them serving on the front lines in various ways in, in other parts of this country or other continents, may, may they be shielded and guided and guarded in, and we, I say children, but it, it can be our brothers and sisters, it can be our parents, it can be our nieces and nephews. So many members of our family are really right there in the middle of everything, and so we we ask that God will be present with them in those places. We also have a family who's experienced, um, an extended member of the family has experienced an advanced cancer diagnosis and a hospice situation. So we have a family that's um, now splitting their time between two states in order to be present to someone who is, is vigiling for a while. And so for, for the other things that have names, cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, ALS, so many different conditions that challenge us. We ask for healing. And this morning, we also turn ourselves towards peace and towards what gives us peace. And sometimes that is celebration and gratitude. And so if there are things that you are grateful for that you're noticing right now, this is a wonderful time to share those. Kevin? Um, I'm grateful for, um, what was it now? Um, our church, the way station, um, my landlord's dogs, winter and autumn, the Ipswich Youth Group Kids, New Hampshire, and Montgomery Gentry. Thank you, Kevin. That's a cool list. And I think pets, we definitely need to be grateful for the pets in our lives. They, they, nothing gets them down. Did I see any other unmuted people, anybody that was wanting to share? Linda? you want to share? No. Dive in. The Osbournes, I see. Go for it, Gia. Uh, we saw a moose the other day, and it was pretty big, and it was right in our, in our field, and it was just such a sighting to, just to see it walk by. And I was just mesmerized by it. Thank you. We, we definitely need to remember all these animals coming out to, uh, they're not there to entertain us, but we're entertained by them anyway. <laughs> Claire, were you, were you wanting to say something? I'm so grateful for music, you know, people like Alan and Billy and 
and the courage of my sister and, and my uh, nephew to, to get out there and record these things. And thank you for the opportunity for them to do that. As well as I was thinking about Lin-Manuel Miranda Hamilton thing. I'm thinking like people who have that skill and, and grateful that they're sharing it with us. And I see the Varians have something they want to share that they're happy about. Um, just yesterday, we found a fox. He was wandering around inside of, um, in our woods, and he, he was smelling something we never knew what. And then, um, he went in our driveway, and then he went to our, the other house, the neighbor's house. The yeah. Neighbor's house. Oh. <laughs> so is that the kind of you? Thank you, Nora. For four-footed and two-footed and winged friends and ones that swim too. And I see Sandy. Yeah, I'm, I just want to say I'm grateful that we have technology so that we are all still connected. Yeah. It means a, a huge deal to me to still be connected to everybody. It's just, it's awesome. I'm just thankful for that. And I see Bob and Kit are unmuted. Oh, I'm thankful that they finally have a vaccine that seems like it will be coming soon. Great. Thank you for the vaccine and those that have worked so hard to create it. That's been somebody's lifetime for the last several months. Steve and Colleen. I uh, just wanted, I'm very grateful for the birth of our first grandchild, Levi, who was born on the 29th of November. Six pounds, six ounces, 19 inches long. Very healthy. Mom is doing well, as, and so is the dad. So, very, very. We keep in touch with them, thankfully, through this technology, and that it has made a difference. That's, yep. It would be very tough without that. Congratulations! Awesome! Congratulations! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! <laughs> and people that are calling in by phone, is there anybody that is wanting to? Like Arden, did you want to say anything? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, I have to go with the technology thing because to see Steve and Colleen, to see Sandy, uh, it's it's amazing, and and we're not going to easily give this up when things are all back again. So we we got to do something to keep it going. And yeah. what I was thinking before that was I have this tiny little black cat who has brought so much joy into my life. Her name is Joy, and um, she's only five and a half pounds, but she purrs constantly and she's just such a sweetheart. And for me right now, um, it's, a, she's an important part of my life. Thank you, Arden. If there's anybody else that is unmuted that wishes to speak, go, just go ahead and do it because I'm not sure who else to call on. I don't want to miss any prayers. Right, then I'm going to ask us together in prayer. Today is the day of calling out the spirit, the hope, the need for peace, peace in our hearts, peace in our homes and in our relationships, peace in our own community, peace in communities that gather together and become regions and states and nations and become the world. The world is as close as those in our own house and our neighbors, and it is as far away as another continent. And yet these two are our brothers and sisters. And so we ask for peace for the bodies, the souls, the minds, the hearts, the gatherings who are all the children of God today and every day. We ask for peace to be a healing energy for all those who are in need of healing or renewal and resilience. And we ask for the gifts that are required of us in order to be agents, change makers, the people who embody peace. And we offer you our words, O oh God, praying together as you first taught us. Our Father, and please unmute. Who art in heaven? Who art in heaven? Heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done, thy will be done. Yeah. on earth as it is, earth, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this give day our daily, daily bread, daily and forgive us our sins, and forgive us our sins, and as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Hopefully, did you guys lose me? Did I lose you? Somebody's down because I You're frozen. I'm frozen. Can you guys you can you see You're me? okay now. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I lost you guys. Sorry about that. Um well we did pretty well. So we'll pray that everything else goes out well. We are now going to sing a song together. We're doing Hark the Herald Angels sing led. I can't remember who recorded this, Nancy or Tyler, but one, if it's a woman's voice, it's Nancy. If it's a guy's voice, it's Tyler. So feel free to mute, mute yourselves for this. The words will be up on the screen. We're doing three verses. Mark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. Peace on Wonderful. It's wonderful. Fantastic. <laughs> um, we will now move into scripture. And again, during these weeks, what we are doing is examining how a prophetic voice, the prophet Isaiah in this case, is then reflected in the nativity story. So we will see first Isaiah's words, and then we'll see how it's used in Matthew. From Isaiah 7, then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, 
Therefore, the Lord will give you a sign. Look, the woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall call him Emmanuel. And from Matthew 1, verses 17 through 25. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit, her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took her as his wife. So ends the reading. So I want to um, focus just a little bit this morning on peace as it is embodied in this man, Joseph. It turns out that when people would talk about the nativity story for many, many centuries, they actually focused on Mary and baby Jesus, but they really didn't talk about Joseph at all. And yet, what an important figure he is right here in these texts. And so it was actually, some commentators would tell you that St. Teresa of Avila, like a thousand years later, over a thousand years later, was the one who refocused people on the importance of Joseph in the story of the nativity. And I think for us as people who are so in want of peace right now, peace peace really, peace in our hearts because we're just sort of filled with unrest and uncertainty and in our homes and our relationships, our community and our world. Joseph is a profound presence for us. And I think of him as a person who, as a, as a peace builder, was one of those who led, you know, great leaders sometimes lead from behind or from the side. They don't necessarily stand in front and have to have the spotlight on them and be the whole voice of a movement. They are the ones who create the foundation, set the framework, and stand to the side so that others may be engaged and empowered to do the work of change and transformation and love and justice. And when we think in our own community of people like that, I wanted to lift up, uh, you know, I know if you, if you aren't from our area, you may not know this person, but to me, to, to Chris and I, as we were talking about this, one of the people that embodies that kind of leadership, and I think the youth will agree, is Barry Chisholm. He's a retired member of our community, and he works with Kiwanis, and both in education here in our church and also with many of the young community leaders in our towns, in our school district. He is a person who helps our children and our youth cultivate their gifts. He, he's constantly a cheerleader and a supporter and an encourager, and yet he doesn't have to stand at the front of the group and make all the announcements and be the voice of whatever the cause is. He really empowers the young people with whom he is working to be those who are deeply immersed in the work that they have chosen to do. And then he's there as the steady, reassuring presence on the sidelines, there to answer a question, there to be supportive or troubleshoot if needed, and when we think of Joseph, isn't that really who Joseph is? I want to share with you a few images of Joseph that we, some of us who did the C3 enjoyed the other night, but I think they're worth sharing with all of you. 
there is a legend about Mary and who was going to become her husband. According to this legend, it wasn't always obvious that Joseph was going to be her betrothed. And so if you are able to see artwork, what you're going to see is from the 1200s, this piece of an altar where all these figures of men are jostling through the framework and breaking out into the space. And on the left is Mary standing there waiting to meet all the suitors who want to marry her. And on the right is a very modest man in his robes. He's not as fancy as everybody else, but he's holding his staff. And the great sign from heaven that he was the one who should become her husband was that the staff burst into flower. And if we, flowers, flowers. So if we look at the, the image that follows this one, we'll begin to see this pattern that's going to emerge for us. We see in the next couple of illuminated images that here is an older gentleman. He's a carpenter, and we see all the tools of his trade. So he's, he's a common man. And yet he was the one through whom God worked. And he was chosen to become the husband and the supporter of both Mary and the Christ child. And in the next image, we see him once again in this triptych. He's over there quietly working away while Mary is being visited by an angel. And their lives are about to be changed greatly. And then as the images continue, we move to the next image we see two portraits of Joseph. And on the left, you'll see that he's holding that same staff and there are flowers at the top of it. And on the right, he's there with the Christ child, cradling the Christ Christ child. Now in later images, and as we go to the next one, we'll begin to see this, they began to portray Joseph as a younger person. So originally they made him be an older, venerable person, and now he's He's becoming younger. This is a wonderful Dutch painting that shows the angel as a young Dutch maiden touching Joseph in his sleep and telling him to be a faithful partner for Mary, even though he thinks that she's embarrassed him and and done something wrong. And then as we go to the next image, we again see these portraits of Joseph. On the left, he's being her partner as they're being betrothed and the staff is there and then on the right again he's holding the Christ child and he bears the staff with the flowers and a few more images just from other cultures as we go here's another of Joseph dreaming and the angel bears the staff with the flowers behind him telling him once again to choose Mary and then we see in the next image a stained glass portrayal of him dreaming and his mind being changed and his heart being changed. And then the last few, I believe, that we're coming to, uh, this is Tissot. This is from the 1890s. He's being awakened by a dream on the left, and then he's at the betrothal with Mary on the right because he's doing the right thing to be her partner. And again, he bears that staff with the flowers. And then we move to Heki who does this portrait of the Holy Family. Um, he, and there he's got, he's got a walking staff because they're on the journey and she's already had the child. But he's this common man. And then the next one is by an, a 20th century Chinese artist. And we see Joseph as a man gathering up the, the straw for the manger, for the bedding to make the Holy Child comfortable and Mary comfortable. And then in this last image, these last few images, we see here is an African-American artist from Kentucky and his portrayal of Joseph as a, a working man. And then we have a 21st century artist. This was painted just two years ago, and it's a very young, handsome Joseph standing there with his arms around the staff and the tools of his trade at his belt. And the things that the artist said about him were that his face was in shadow because, again, he's humble. He doesn't have to be in the spotlight. But you see that his ear is illuminated because he's listening to God and he's listening to the needs of his family. And we can take the images down and and enjoy each other's company. And I just, you know, looking at each other again, We are the hands and the body of God. 
And Jesus picked a person who was remarkable for his steadfast faith, his, his peaceful heart, and the way that he was simply there when those that he loved needed him. Peace begins in these places. And peace begins in each of our homes. And right now, you have the privilege of looking into each other's homes or safe places and into each other's eyes and to see in each other where peace begins. God doesn't choose people that are kings and governors and judges only. He may choose them too and raise them up to those positions. But God begins by working right in our homes, right in our hearts, in our families, in our villages, in our valleys, in our communities, wherever we are in this big, wide world. God chose a very humble, gentle man to be the foundation for the Holy Family. And it was his modest, steadfast love and his ability to be that peaceful soul that set the stage for the entire Holy Story. And so we give thanks for these peace builders that live among us in all the ways that we are each given to embody peace. And today, we remember that this is the prayer that we hold for this week, that there shall be peace in our hearts, our homes, our village, our valleys, our nation, and our world. Thanks be to God. And in the spirit of peace, may the words and the song of Ose Shalom offered by our choir bring peace right into our homes here.
That was Feel that was beautiful. You. Thank you. That was awesome. That was very well done. Awesome. Awesome. And now I just want to do a brief reminder that we ask you all to faithfully go on making your contributions to the church, whether you mail them in by envelope or drop them somewhere in the front of the church. I found one in the food pantry basket yesterday. Um, there are all kinds of interesting places where you can go to jxncc.org and make an online donation. We ask that you shall be our faithful partners as we continue to be bright lights, advent lights, agents of hope and change and peace in this world. And then I'm going to migrate us into communion. So if you don't already have your things for communion, now's an excellent time to jump up and run and grab them. But don't hurt yourself if you do that. And I'm alone in the church here, so I'm completely unmasked, and um, we're not passing out any <laughs> communion elements to anyone else today. But we begin by asking God to be with us. And we put up first the Sorcerum Corda and Sanctus as we gather for communion. Please um, go ahead and unmute for this. God be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift, lift them up to the skies. Let us give thanks to God most high. It, it is, is right, right to give thanks. thanks. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. And you can, let's, well, let's be unmuted together for this. We're going to give it a whirl. Holy, 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 holy. Lord, Lord God, God Almighty, Almighty. Early, early in the morning, our songs of joy holy, 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 merciful, merciful, and mighty, God in three God persons, in three persons, blessed, 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 And now I would ask that you join me in prayer. O oh, holy God, we call your blessing down upon these, the elements that we have gathered and brought before you. We welcome your presence among us. You are present to us in the cup and in the bread, and you are present in every home and in every heart. We ask that you will bless us and bless these elements as we remember and celebrate your holy meal again together. Amen. And so, let us recall that hospitality is a theme that runs through the nativity story too. That Joseph and Mary traveled and they sought a place of refuge. Eventually they were taken into what we think was a family home and we'll talk more about that in weeks to come. We think of it as a stable, but it was probably the first floor of a family home. But in that welcome, they found what they needed and that too is offered here for us today. And so first, we take the bread and we recall that as Christ broke that bread for those that he loved, he offered what they needed most, which was his great love, his transforming presence and the breaking open of his life that our lives too may be broken open. 
And so today we take and we eat and we do so in remembrance of Christ's transforming presence in the world. And in the same way, we recall that he poured himself out, not just for those in a room with him one night, but for all of us. This is why the story is handed down year by year, century by century, and we tell it again here and now. This love is present with us even now. And we are called to pour ourselves out for those around us as Christ's love was poured out for us. And so today, when we drink from any cup that we have chosen, any vessel of any kind of beverage, may God bless it and call us to a place of remembrance for the sacred act of receiving and giving. We do so in remembrance of Christ's love. And I would like to, you know, if, if you're not on gallery view and you can be in gallery view, go back to gallery view again just so you can see each other just for a moment. And we might have new faces here. And so at the end of the service, we'll try to welcome people and say hello to those that we don't yet know. For now, let us join in the thanksgiving for this meal that we have shared well, the words will be on the screen. Please unmute. We are not alone. God made us. We, we are not alone. alone. We, we have to them. Them. Can anything separate us from the love of Christ? Can, Can trouble, trouble pain, pain, persecution, persecution, persecution? No, in all these things, we win an overwhelming victory through the one whose love for us has been proven. Neither, neither death, 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 nor death, nor life, 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 and now we're going to sing another one of our wonderful hymns, O Little Town of Bethlehem. This one was led by Tyler, Claire's nephew, and Nancy's son. So you can mute yourselves, and there are three verses.
hearts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No, he may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ In the, way of, um, in the way of volunteers and many uh, things, we thank our song leaders and occasionally we still get a mash of different verses happening, but you guys were singing and these voices are wonderful and I love singing whatever verse is before me or that I'm listening to. So with gratitude for our song leaders. Before we move to the benediction, just very briefly, is there anyone who is new to our community that wishes to be introduced to us. Um, this was a request from from those that are gathered here if, if they don't know you. So I'm thinking that Nancy at least been listening in. She's Claire's sister. And Suzanne is not new to the choir, but possibly new sort of kind of new to some folks that are joining us. Just Suzanne's waving there. Do you want to introduce yourself or just say hi, Suzanne? Oh, hi. I forgot I was muted. <laughs> just hello. Yes. My my daughter is a member of your church, so right. or going to become. She attends your church with okay. the kids. That's right. Austin and Hunter. Uh, I don't know. Nancy, did you want to unmute and say hello or no? Sure, I'll say hello. <laughs> Here, I'll put my video on too. <laughs> there I am. Hello, everybody. So it was so it was so wonderful. Thank you for the, that opportunity to sing. It was just 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 wonderful. You know, we, we haven't been able to sing, you know, in churches, and and I'm in a choir also, so we haven't really been able to sing. So that was so wonderful for me to be able to sing for all of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, my son. Of course, he will never sing for me. You know that kind of because you just don't do that for your mother. You just don't sing for your mother. She always wants you to sing. So for for me to be able to hear Tyler. Oh, that was just gorgeous just for me so yeah. thank you all thank you thank you thank you thank you so much that's it have a great day merry christmas i can tell that nancy <laughs> is claire's sister can you guys can you guys see any family resemblance there yeah oh if yeah you, oh no if you close oh, your yeah. eyes it sounds just like claire <laughs> <laughs> wonderful well, um anybody else that wants to introduce themselves i, I don't want to i don't want to you know put people in, in a tizzy if you don't feel like introducing yourselves, but I see a couple names that I don't necessarily know. Um, I'm just also going to say, you know, again, we at this point now have 10 people joining the church uh, the first Sunday in January. So if you've been thinking about doing that and you want company, this is a good time to do it because you'll have really good company and we can send you out a kit and we can tell you more about what that means. But we're very excited. This was, it wasn't really on my radar screen to think about this, but people started asking. So what a gift to want to be part of this little wonderful faith community that we are. Okay. Yeah, one okay. thing before we uh, leave, I neglected to tell, say this before, but our daughter who has been undergoing chemotherapy for breast cancer has completed her treatments and the doctor is very pleased with the progress made in shrinking the tumor. And she'll have it removed probably after the first of the year. And that then is we'll undergo radiation. That is wonderful update, Roy. We thank you for sharing that. And that's a good way to kind of go out with just a little bit more happy news. We're gonna now sing our benediction and then you can hang out you know alan will give us our transitional music after the benediction you can hang out and say hello to each other for a few minutes or you can go off on your days but let's do the benediction together we mute for the benediction and we all just sing along <laughs> Say. Hey. 
Thank mm -hmm. you. 